everybody? Can you hear me in the back? Thumbs up? All right, remember thumbs up, seven up back in the days? Elementary school, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. And thank you for inviting me again and for the introduction. This is a pleasure. I know I've been talking with Nathan for many months and he had me come up to North Branch, do a little song and dance and great people up there and he said even better, pe better people down here. So I, I, I don't know if that's the truth, truth or not. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I've got about four hours. He gave me four hours to talk. Or is it four and a half? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> See ya. No, I have done those sessions before and it's a challenge both for me and for the people listening to me. So now we'll have some fun today. I do ask a couple of things. I'm a little bit unique that not only read it Italian, but uh, unique that I get you going a little bit. I play tennis. Anybody play tennis here? One? Anybody heard of tennis here? Okay, so there we go. There we go. So my ask of you is when I hit the ball over to the net, what do you do in tennis? You got to hit it back. Thank you. Yeah, so that's participation, whether it's a head nod or staying awake. I'll take that even. Um, do that, please, and thank you. And what I also like to do is get you engaged. I was told by Chris in the back here, he's, this is where I have to live, and which is tough for me because I'm a wanderer. <laughs> so I said, don't go in front of your darn slide. So I won't do that. I'm going to grab my, my clicker here. So I'm going to live up here. So you're safe in the back. Usually, if you're nodding off, I'd come back and kick the table, but I won't do that to you. <laughs> I want to we'll have some fun. So I'm going to ask you, please, and thank you. I know you're eating, so if you, you've got a table in front of you, if you don't mind putting your uh, drink or plate on your table and stand up if you don't mind, please, and thank you. So I'm a positive pusher, positivity pusher. Um, if that was a, a thing, I'd be on the street doling it out, the positivity. So one of the things that I love to do is get everybody engaged. You're already doing it, the, the kinesiology of listening and, and digesting. Is that me? I apologize, Chris. Okay. Did I look taller from back there? Okay, good. Thumbs up. <laughs> now, I'm going to have you do a couple of things. You may or may not know your neighbor very well, and if you don't and don't want to um, do a knuckle bump high five, you can do an air bump knuckle bump high five. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. You have to do it to two people. So you got to do knuckle bump, high five, and when you give the high five, you got to say great job. Okay, I don't care what it's for. They did a great job something, right? So on count of three, two, one, knuckle bump high five to two people. Great job. Great job. Great job. And stay standing. Yes, I love it. See? Are we boxing? Uh, Frank is going fisticuffs up here. <laughs> Pugilist. True. Oh. We won't take offense at that, will we? No. Oh, no, no, no. Stay standing. I'm going to let you down here in a second. But uh, traditions in all the places I go, and this is very nice, usually I'm uh, hopping on a plane and going to uh, the West Coast or East Coast, and they don't get my jokes over there. So I let, coming back to Minnesota. I'm from Rosemount, just south of here. So I always do a selfie with the crowds, okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna do a selfie, so you got it, but thumb, my, my trademark is thumbs up. I got you in the back here too, I'll get you. Thumbs up, you can do both hands. Thumbs up, I'm gonna put you on my website if that's okay. Get everybody, we'll do a, could you guys all move over here? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ready? One, stay up there, two, three, then I'm gonna do one just by you. You guys are way better looking here than me, so one, two, Three, I got you. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> that ate into my four-hour time, so I got to <laughs> ski daddle here. All right. So that was me. Frank was kind enough. We had, we chick chatted about my grandparents. They're Italian, and so I'll talk a little bit more about that. This was me as a kid. Not actually me. It was a picture of a kid, but that looks like me when I was a kid, eight, nine, ten years old. And you might have kids or grandkids that were doing this to you. You tell them one thing, and ah, I was worried about break dancing. That tells you my age. And re riding my BMX bike or going to the movies with girls. Not in lo those orders, but that was kind of... I never listened to my grandfather. There he is, good-looking guy, soldier in the back. Unfortunately, all these people on the slide are no longer here. And so uh, to homage of them, and I, I go out and I do what I love to do, and I love to instill positivity. And one of the things that we talked about, Frank and I, and Nathan is positivity in the workplace. Life is too short. 
We're not guaranteed tomorrow. I have, I have more yesterdays than I do tomorrow. I know that. So I'm going to make sure that everybody that I interact with is, walks away a little bit more positive. And one thing he would tell me, remember that kid with the ears like this, the finger in the ears? He would tell me, there, oh, look at that. I forgot about that one. Look at the future public speaker in the middle there. A lot more hair. Red. Sans bald spot. And red. There's my, there's the, my grandfather on the right-hand side. Anthony Elementi. He would tell me things, we get old too quick. Anybody want to debate me with that? No, we get old too darn quick. But that's not the poignant thing. I didn't really, you know, I was eight, nine years, okay, Grandpa, yeah, yeah, yeah. As we get older, things really hit home. Here's the second part that really hit home and smart too late. Powerful. When I was 10 years old, I didn't care. Now that I'm old, in my 50s, I go, gosh darn, that guy was smart. Old too quick and smart too late. So I'm just trying to get smarter quicker, that's it. I go all around the country, I'm a reminder, I'm a positivity pusher, and it might not be your time to have this digest, and that's cool. It might not be your time to pick up when I'm laying down, and that's cool too. But at some point, maybe it sinks in. Whether it's me or somebody else, life is too darn short. Let's get smarter quicker. So we're gonna give you some tools, we're gonna have fun. We'll spend the next 15, 20 minutes going through a cat. Spend a lot of time, because you've got other things to do, but we'll talk more about it. Powerful statement. Let Tong take a picture of that. He's taking selfies. No, no. <laughs> One of the things, I've had the pleasure of working in a big company, Fortune 500 company, and I've had a pleasure of working with small companies. And one of the things that I always preach is communication. How are you communicating with the people you work with, your boss, your subordinates? And we're going to be playing tennis here in a little bit, because I'm going to ask you some things you're going to engage. I got some smiles. The smile science. Anybody heard of the smile science? It's something I made up right now. So if you did, I was going to say, how did you? I just made that up. I was going to be smarter quicker. <laughs> when anybody yawns, what do you tend to want to do? Yawn. Yawn. Same works for smiling, right? And there is, this is, you can look it up, because smarter people, doctors, Frank knows a doctor personally, when you smile, even if it's a fake smile, your neuropeptides fire. Acts as kind of a pain reliever, a stress reliever. So when you're stressed, smile. I know it's tough. Life is not easy every day. But hit, you smiled. I got you. OK. Positive, inspired people define a company's culture. I truly believe that. When I, I talked with a leader yesterday, a national sales leader, he wants me to come talk to his folks, and I said, okay, how's your culture? That's the first thing. Is it a negative culture? What am I getting myself into, or is it a positive culture? What are you doing as the leader, and what were you doing as an individual contributor to contribute to this? Because positive, inspired people, people don't leave the job generally because they love the people they work with, they love their boss, it's for other reasons. So I truly believe this. So hopefully, you walk out of here feeling a little bit more charged up. Okay. This was me in a position not too long ago, and whether this is you now or you felt like this at some point in your life working, head in your hands, miserable, life can throw some curveballs, and I get it. Look at this one. This is much better. Ha! <laughs> much better, right? So how can we get there? Life throws us curveballs. Life is not easy. We have speed bumps, believe me. We have speed bumps. Let's get there. One of the things that I always ask, like I asked the person to talk with yesterday, are you asking your team some questions? No? Okay, here's some suggestions. I can't tell you what to do, but I can at least suggest some things. Anybody use one of these for their, with their people? Do you? Secret Santa. Say it again? When I do a Secret Santa for my team, yes. this is what I have a I love it. I love it. So, I hit the ball to you and you hit it back. Thank you very much. And some of these things I'm going to suggest, and there's two other slides. We, we can't drill down to the center of the earth today. But there's two other suggestions. If you're running a team, if you are a leader, or even if you're not a leader, you're an individual contributor, you can suggest this to those that are in charge. This was given to me when I was not the leader. I was a coworker of somebody. And I said, why do you want this of me? Because I want to get to know you more, Brian. I said, that's pretty darn cool. So now he knows my hobbies, what I like to do, how I like to be recognized, what I like to eat. So he's very kind of still in contact with them. So 
So you don't have to be the leader. You, don't have, you can suggest this. Two other things. I'm going to hit the ball to you to get to know your folks, to get to know your coworkers, to get to know your boss. If you're by yourself, a lone sole proprietor, you can always help others around you in meetings like this too. Anybody heard of this? 16 personalities? Awesome, awesome. How much did it cost to do? You know what this costs? Free 99. Today only. Tomorrow it costs. But this is free. There might be some follow-up stuff there. But this is free. I worked with somebody that was putting on a, an event for a bunch of sales folks. And I said, he asked, what can I do for a team event? And I said, have you ever done this? Any kind of a 16 personality test? He goes, no, that's pretty cool. What is that all about? You go online, 10 minutes. They fill out some of the things, some easy questions. It develops what they are. Are they introverted or extroverted and so on and so forth. Not the most exciting thing in the world to fill out, but however, now their coworkers know a little bit more about them. Their boss knows a little bit more about them. Now you can go off and do so, uh, a little a meeting together. I, and all the e, uh, what am I, at a council? I'm a very caring, social, community-minded person. That sounds pretty cool. But it has acronyms, an ESFJ. You can have an ISFJ. Group those together. Now let's solve a problem. Now let's work together and solve this issue. Make it fun. So that's an idea. One more I'm going to share with you, because I want to share some tools, is this. Anybody done this before? Who, who's ever heard of this? I'm going to hit the ball to you. When did you use it, if you don't mind? We've done numerous ones of those, but we just did this one two years ago, I think. OK. What was the follow-up, if you don't mind me asking? We had a big powwow meeting and put you know, the same people, like people together, and then we divided up into different categories to try. But we haven't done anything since, which I think we should. <laughs> it's one of those good things that I met a salesperson that was killing it. And I go, how are you doing it? I used to do this, 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 and he wasn't killing it anymore. Why'd you stop? It works so well, why'd you stop? So this is one of the things, here's an idea that I can give to you, whether you take it or leave it. When I became a new leader, first thing I want to do is get in, to know my, the, my crew. And it's one thing to know what they are. My personality, incidentally, is da -da -da, positivity is my first one. That works out nice being a motivational speaker, right? But there's others on the team that are analytical. That's not me. That's OK. Now when I go in a meeting with you, I know Frank's analytical, he's not going to want to hear the fluff. He wants to go right to the point. Now, one of the things that works so well, we stopped doing it. Here's a suggestion that I did. It's so one thing for me as the boss to know, but each team meeting, I want Nathan to tell what he is and tell a little bit more about what that is and what makes him tick. And how can you approach Nathan being the futuristic person better? How can we work together? So that's an idea. If you're running a team, and if you're not even running a team, suggest it to your boss. It's one of those things that if your boss doesn't know more about you, shame on you. Your boss is busy. You should be helping that person out also. So two, two ideas. Ah, we're going to switch gears here because I've got a limited amount of time. I'm going to give you each a billion dollars. Is that going to make you more positive? A billion dollars, Frank? Now he's smiling. Oh, yeah. He says, yeah, a billion. He said, I'll take 100 bucks. Me too, I'll take 100 even. So a billion dollars, one of the things that I always ask, okay, what are you going to do tomorrow? If I give you a billion dollars, what are you going to do tomorrow? You don't have to work anymore. I'm going to sleep in. Does somebody says, I'm going to sleep in, that's where I'm sure. But tomorrow, that's going to be your magic. That's what you love to do. You don't have to worry about paying the bills. It's almost, that's your passion. And I talk a lot about passion. Magic, and incidentally, I like to do magic too, but that's not the point. Whatever you love to do, that's your magic, and unfortunately, too many people are hiding it. I've worked in a lot of companies. I've helped a lot of people out in companies. People that are miserable. Remember the person held hand in, or head in the hands? Miserable because they're not doing their passion. They're not doing what they love to do. And as leaders in the room, are we inviting those that we work with to share their passion, not be sh shy about that? Remember that? I love saying that twice or seeing that twice. I'm going to share one of the things about perspective, too. Share your magic, share your positivity, and put things into perspective. When I talked to the person yesterday, I reminded this person, okay, here's perspective. I'm going to share two perspectives, personal and professional perspectives. Here's the personal, and Nathan might remember this. I have a son who's going into high school, and I have a daughter who's going into college. 
and my daughter is very intelligent, book smart, studying on the weekends, who does that? Her old man didn't do that. But my son, look at that smile. My son, and I don't want to bring a downer, but my son has no friends. My, my son is autistic. He's very learning disabled. But he does very, he works harder than other kids to get good grades, and we work with him. So his best day is my worst day. I put things into perspective. I'm having a tough day, Elementi, shame on me. He's just trying to get by. I have a lot of friends. He has no friends. Put things into perspective. He might have a bad day, a speed bump. Put things into perspective. Help somebody else out, whether it's a coworker, whether it's a friend. I wear this autistic awareness ring when I'm having a bad day. Shame on me, Brian. Are you kidding me? You didn't get this booking. You were late for a flight. Oh, come on. Perspective. Personal perspective. Second thing is professional perspective. Anybody know who this is? I'm going to hit the ball to you. John Legend. John, uh, Nathan's seen this before. He's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say what? <laughs> John Wooden. Who is John Wooden, Nathan? He's a great basketball coach. Great basketball coach. Does anybody know? I'm not a huge co college basketball coach. I'm not a huge college basketball watcher or fan. Anybody here do a lot of college basketball? Anybody know what basketball is? OK, we got two people. Good. <laughs> you know what it is. And there's a ball. Believe it or not, I played basketball. You're looking at, what? You played basketball? I did. I loved it. I was the point guard. I dish because I couldn't shoot or dunk. John Wooden, so I, was at, I did this at a, uh, a banquet. I had this slide at a banquet. And I asked, how many college basketball teams are there? And somebody said, 384. I said, oh my gosh. That's a lot, right? And that's Division I. So put that into perspective. How tough is it to win one championship with all those people? Pretty darn tough. I don't think, the, has the Gophers ever won a championship? <laughs> not to be mean, I'm just saying, have they ever won? I don't know if they have. I don't think so. Not in my lifetime. <laughs> it's a, well, probably not. <laughs> I think the Lynx, we're, gonna, we're riding the Lynx tails, that's for darn sure. So to win one championship is pretty darn impressive. Anybody know how many John's won? Ten. Ten. Unbelievable. So would you say he's a pretty good coach from the statistics? But that's not what impresses me. I read his story. Does anybody know a little bit about John Wooden? OK. I'll share what impressed me. He's got all these theories and the triangle, all this and stuff. But what impresses me is what he said. He says, find your broom. From a professional standpoint, somebody that won 10 championships got some clout. Doesn't have to do all the quote unquote grunt work. But he was found after the games, after practice, going to the closet and getting the room and helping sweep up. And somebody asked, why are you doing this? He says, if you want to make an impact, find your broom and help out. That's what impressed me. Perspective. Everybody has the opportunity to help out, but are we doing it? Perspective. Maybe you are, but I find myself not always lending a hand when I know I can, professionally and personally. So find a broom. I know you can. What, what team? So he was UCLA. So he oh, coached okay. some big uh, Lou Alcindor back in the day, who was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was pretty good. So yeah, he, he did pretty, he was pretty good. I'm going to end on this. I think, what's the time looking at? Because I've got sure, time. that sure. time. 10, 15 more minutes. Okay, well, good. Then I'm, so what I'm going to do is, in the front, nice and loud, read that to some, read that out loud. Be positive today, someone is counting on you. I even take this a step further. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's got eyes on you, whether you know it or not, whether that's online, whether that's elbow to elbow in here. Somebody's always watching you. And I always make a point to help somebody out. And it doesn't have to be because I'm helping somebody out because I'm, somebody's watching me. I want to make sure that they, they see me doing it. It's one of those things that perspective, it's one of those things that if you can do it, why wouldn't you want to do it? Find your broom. What was the saying my grandfather said? Extra credit. What was the saying? You remember what he said? Yes. What did he say? All too soon. All too soon. Uh, 
Ah, what, what did you say, Tom? I don't need to put you on the spot. They were right. I just wanted to make sure that they were. I want you to remember that. And you're going to have a lot of speakers come up or, you know, in the future or in, the, in previous. You've had some great speakers I've heard. You know, so better late than never. Better late than never is not too bad. This is true. One of the, but my grandfather didn't say that. Even, so I, I can't use that. Stand it, so yeah. I... Now I'm going to steal it. Yeah, stand, like stand. Any, better late than ever. Anybody else? I want, this is, I'm going to hit the ball back to you. I'm going to have you stand up here in a second, and, and we're going to end it on a, good, on a good foot, like James Brown would say. Mm -hmm. But anybody else have a, a motto? Anybody else have a saying that they live by? Tell me something good. I'm sick and tired of people always coming up being negative to me, so I always <laughs> say, tell me something good. Yeah. Tell me something good. You know what's interesting? The person I was talking to yesterday, they have periodic stand-ups with his team, and that's how he starts out his meeting. Tell me something good. Tell me something good. Anybody else? Make a difference each day. Make a difference each day. To someone. I love it. Becky. Get 1% 1 better than today. Get 1% better. I know there's a speaker that has that out there, and I love it. Yes. Um, James Clear, among others. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Nobody's been sick that usually happen a lot. <laughs> Talking about perspective, there, you know, I talked with a sales manager in the past, and one of the things they're, they're really down in the dust because they, it's an expensive product they're selling, and one person said, well, I only got three appointments today. Three appointments is pretty darn, if you've been in sales, if you get three appointments, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, but I didn't make the sale. It's about perspective. You got that 1% better today. And that's 37%. There you go. Love it. According to the math. I'm not, I'll trust you. I'm not good with math. <laughs> Frank, you were going to say something? I, I, I kind of live like life is all about the loss. Because and you, you're going to lose your looks, your good looks, your age, your, your friends, everybody dying off. So live for the day. Live for the day. I love it. Life is about loss. I, I kinda, we l learn by our failures, too. We learn by loss. We, yes. Who else? I need six more before I'm done. I'm just kidding. We, we start most of our meetings with um, the good news. Everybody has to share one good thing personally and one good thing about the business for that week. One good thing personally, one good thing about the business. I love it. One more before I take some Q&A. <laughs> My grandkids are not what was your favorite thing today? I love yeah, it. Could have been a boring day, but there's something I love it. Yes. Not to steal that, we do that at the kitchen table. What was one good thing about today? What was one thing you didn't like about today? Let's work on both. Love it. Questions for me. I'm going to throw up my slide here, and inevitably, people ask if they want to get in touch with me. They've already had one person get in touch with me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go on my website if I have any. I do have a little thing, a contact on my website, if there's anything that you didn't like or if there's anything that you liked about it. I spent many years in corporate. We used to give these smile sheets at, out at the end. What did you like about it? What did you like about it? Um, I read the ones, every one of them. And it's fun here. Sure. Do I have time for a quick story? OK. So I was in Michigan, and we were doing a multi-day uh, class. And <clears throat> I got to walk around. I was in, cause it's tough room you just doing here. But I used to walk around the class, and I could tell who was interested and who wasn't just by the way they were interacting, and one guy was arms closed or like this the whole time. Not to, you're, you're smiling, so I'll give you grace on that. Taking notes, we call them a curmudgeon. You know what a curmudgeon is? That's not a nice thing to say, but it's, uh, wasn't very friendly to the, his table mates, wasn't very friendly to me when I called on him, and, but the whole time taking notes, taking notes, and oh, taking notes, and was not participating, wasn't sharing, wasn't kind to anybody, and, at the very end, he filled it out. He's one of the first ones to fill it out, so I knew it was his, because he put it down first, and then pile, pile, pile. You flip it over, it's his, right? And the one thing that he said on there was, why would I share my ideas, my thoughts, with my competition? Ah, but you were taking a ton of notes, willing to take all the ideas from everybody else, but you weren't willing to share. Shame on you. You get what you give. 
And one of the things I mentioned that is because I have a contact sheet on there. If there's anything that you want to share, that's how I get better. That's how I can share my message even more for longer sessions. And so if I can help any of you guys out, let me know. Questions? Brian, yes. maybe if you could share what your, uh, well, I don't necessarily call it training, but what do you kind of bring to a company? Is it kind of what you briefly described, interaction, making employees around you better? I mean, if you could kind of describe what you're offering, or you yeah. customize it based on what the, uh, the employer is looking for. Or All of the above. What's your first name? Stan. Stan, all the above Stan. So I have three main keynotes. If you go on my website, you'll see one is on leadership, one is on inspiration, and one is uh, tactical. So if, I mean, it's, it depends on what you are looking for, but the person I, for example, yesterday I talked with somebody and said, this is kind of what I'm looking for. This is, I said, fine. Let's tailor it to what you need, what's going to be most effective to you. I used to teach sales for many years, and one of the things I said, you don't go in and give a quote right away. You gotta learn about the person first for crying out loud. So I do a consultation with the person. So what can I do for you to help be of value to you and not just cookie cutter. You can go off the keynotes and see my videos and all that kind of stuff. If it doesn't make sense to you, why do it? So if it's leadership, if it's inspiration, elevation, that type of thing, I can tailor it to where you like it. Production. Good question, Stan. Anything else? Yeah. How do you, uh, I guess, address positive and negative? current workplace environment where people are working remote, people come in every now and then, and how do you think of that inspire positive? So I hated working remote. I was in the classroom for many years, this type of a setting for many years, and when we had COVID hit, we had to do remote, and I said, this is going to be the worst thing ever. Oh, I can't high five, I can't knuckle bump, I can't do any of that kind of stuff. But we, we made it work. Virtual still works. I'm doing a virtual one not too far along from, uh, along from now. And you can still be interactive. You can still say, tell me one good thing that happened today. What worked today? What didn't work? It's just a different medium. It's, it, it's being consistent. So that's when I was talking to the person. I said, are you consistent with being in touch with the people? That's the worst thing as a leader. That's the worst thing as a team is not being consistent with their cut. That, from, my, from my perspective. When you're giving seminars and a group of people, you can obviously see, you make eye contact, you can talk to people, you can ask some questions. When you're presenting virtually, how can you connect with people <coughs> better on a meeting in a virtual environment? Lots of ways to do it. There's check-ins. There is interacted on screen. Okay, everybody take their arrow, put it on here. Everybody take their arrow, put it on here. Everybody chat something in. You can still call out by, by name. Tong, give me an answer on this. Put your arrow on this, Tong, please. Or not to call out, it's just, but you, you can always be interactive. If that's something you need help with, I've done a lot of that. But yeah, you, you can fist bump and high five, but you can always call out in a professional way, in an encouraging way, an inspiring way to get them engaged. So I'm assuming you go into businesses and help uh, office continue yes. uh, employees. How long are, I'm just kind of thinking of my structure, where you know, we have different teams, they all, you know, whether it's administration, installation, or people that go into home, then sales, of course. Um, how long do you feel, like, do you do an hour talk, or a half day thing, is it a full day seminar? Depends on what you need. I mean, it really, I've done multiple day seminars. I went to, and I was, who was I telling earlier? I went to Omaha for four people, for two days. And I said, I don't care if it's four people or 400 people. It's, it, it's the outcome, it's the input and, and the engagement. So it depends on what you need. Okay. If it's a one hit, you want just to ignite and get some ideas, you know, in an hour. But if you want, okay, now we need a strategy for three months down the line, a check back in and so on and so forth. More like a one, hit. one hit, yeah, yep. yep. I worked with Lori, I won't mention last name, and it was an hour and did, no. <laughs> it, it was a keynote, it was a keynote, it was a keynote, not a, not a going in the company, but yeah. Were you waving to me? Oh, I thought it was one of these high fives. Do I, you had, we're at time? Okay, so what I'd like you to do, please and thank you, we're gonna end on the, on the good foot here. So if you can stand up one more time. You've gotta choose two new people. Two new people. Knuckle bump, high five, and said thank you for all you do. Three, two, one. Thank you for all you do.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thank Thanks. you for all you do. Hey. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, my friend. I bring the slides. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it up for Brian. Let's say a uh, big thank you. You want thank you for all you do. Yeah, yeah.